You're not going to want to miss this episode of the AI Show where we introduce Azure Machine Learning Compute Instance, finally a place where all data scientists can freely share. Make sure you tune in. Hello and welcome to this episode of the AI Show. We're going to learn about Azure Machine Learning Compute Instance with my special guest. Tell us who you are and what you do, my friend. Hello, uh, I'm Maxim Lukyanov. I'm Program Manager on Azure Machine Learning Team. Fantastic. So, Azure Machine Learning Compute Instance. That's it's right. It's kind of a mouthful. Why don't you tell us what it is? Well, uh, Azure Machine Learning Compute Instance is a next iteration of Notebook VM. So it's a popular offering that we already released in public preview, mm -hmm. and now we are evolving it into a compute instance. I see. So what was called Notebook VM before is now Azure Machine Learning Compute Instance. Exactly. So what's new? Well, uh, we are changing the name because we added new capabilities. I see. And Notebook VM kind of outgrew its name. Mm -hmm. So now we are adding support for R, R Studio, for TensorFlow, uh, TensorBoard, and with that many kind of open source project supported by uh, Notebook VM, we gave it a new name to kind of reflect uh, broader responsibilities. So basically, it's just a ginormous machine in the cloud that you can do cool machine learning stuff on. Well, it's a well-known kind of concept of VM in the cloud. It's a VM, mm -hmm. but it's managed and it can do uh, many things that IT pros require, like um, ensuring that it's a secure environment for data scientists to do their job. And one of the things that, that I like, it because I'm looking at this slide here that's, that's really cool, all of the other stuff is nice. But pre-configured for ML is probably the nicest, right? And why don't you tell us what that means and why that's important? Yeah, absolutely. So pre-configured for ML means that we kind of eliminate all of the time that data scientists usually spend uh, on setup tasks. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the kind of aspects of uh, being productive or mm -hmm. uh, making uh, VM offering that is productive for data scientists. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you look at other pieces of this puzzle on the screen, then we are not only uh, talking about data scientists' fault. The Compute Instance as a product aims to bridge the two worlds uh, of data scientists and IT pro because they are different. Right. And, and when you say that, like, I mean, I, I don't care, right? But at the same time, I start caring when I made it work on my machine and then I want someone else to use that machine to see that I made it work too. And that, then you get into IT pro style of things, right? Uh, that's right. Uh, so from data scientist point of view, what, what uh, data scientists care about is productivity, about being able to use latest and greatest AI techniques to do their jobs in the best possible way, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that they kind of prefer to have a virtual machine environment which is fairly flexible, allows them to do customizations at right. fairly low level. But they operate in the context of the organizations of enterprises. Right. And this is the world of IT pros, and IT pros care a lot about, hey, our enterprise uh, has a stringent security requirements. There is a uh, data privacy concerns. There is a compliance. So we build this compute instance that kind of bridges to, uh, this two together. Uh, and basically, compute instance has a hard shell outside mm -hmm. that allows it. <coughs> sorry, that allows it to be uh, protected from all the known security threats. But inside, it allows data scientists to have uh, basically unfettered access to the virtual machine that they know and love and have full flexibility in the way they do their job. Well, this sounds amazing. I feel like I need to see how this is done. Do you have something yeah. to show us? Yes, let's take a look. All right. So we are in our new uh, Azure Machine Learning Studio UI. Okay. And we have this amazing new integrated notebooks. You can see, you can look at these notebooks, you can run them. Hold on, you're going too fast. So I, because this is, this is new to what we had before, because before when we're talking about notebook instance, I, I fired up a machine and then there was stuff there that yeah. I had to go to. This is now integrated into the, to the actual workspace. Is that right? Exactly. That's one of the uh, kind of benefits of the uh, compute instance. That's a new name. Uh, that it is fully integrated in all of the Azure machine learning service kind of elements, including the Studio UI. That's really cool because then effectively what you have is you have like everything in one place, and this compute instance is running all the stuff behind it, correct? Exactly, yeah. Oh, so cool. you, can, you can see, it, well, we are using build, um, uh, development build, so uh, not all of the names have changed to compute instance, mm -hmm. but you can see that f to run this notebook, I basically attach it to one of the compute instances. Mm -hmm. So that's this kind of point of integration where I have ability to customize this VM to whatever I need, 
and then just use it from the con uh, conveniences of this integrated experience that uh, Studio provides. And I'm a huge fan of that primarily because it removes an extra step of having to go to the machine and then run in and then go to the Jupyter Lab or whatever Jupyter Notebook we Exa call. Exactly. And it's not only convenient, it's also secure because we take care of making sure that when you log in into this place, we propagate all of the uh, security throughout when you connect to, to the Notebook VM. That's so awesome. You don't need to re-enter your credentials and at the same time, we can ensure that they're actually present. So as I'm looking at this though, like the thing that strikes me is that I see other users in there too, which means that if you're collaborating in the workspace, there's like other other names in there, so p other people can see your notebooks. Exactly. So the workspace introduces this concept of files. Uh -huh. Basically, there is a workspace files where you can collaborate with other users of the workspace on those same files on those same notebooks. That's that's awesome. Cool. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So how do we make these? Well, first let's uh, look at this kind of claim of customization. So. Uh, one of the popular ways people use Jupyter is to use it with uh, custom packages. Mm -hmm. For example, Seaborn is a visualization library that is super popular. So I just installed it. Well, it was already installed. Okay, uh, but I just installed the Seaborn library, and we can use it immediately uh, to do some visualization. Right here inside of the Studio UI, you can see all of these visualizations. And do I have to push the button or can I do Shift Enter like I'm used to? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, let, okay, okay. Let me Shift Enter. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I, I was like, if you took that away, I'm going to be upset, right? <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, this integrated notebooks are fully compatible Jupyter notebooks. So we take care of making sure that the two worlds of like uh, well, uh, well known tools that data scientists use, which is Jupyter mm -hmm. and our kind of UI and integration, they play well together. That's cool. Love it, love it. So it's, it's just notebooks are available to everyone. Everyone can use them inside of the workspace. I'm, I'm, so, I'm a huge fan of this. All right, so we're going to make a new one now. I see you hovering over that. <laughs> uh, the list of compute instances is available here, right? So you, I, I can choose and attach to a new one, uh, to existing one. But if I want to create a new one, I can just click and create. So let's start with selecting the VM size. So we can select GPU machines, CPU machines. Let's start with some simple like GPU. Uh, and let's give it a name. Uh, and now you can see that in addition uh, to kind of the simple create options, now we have more advanced controls that are important from security point of view. Right. Like, hey, enabling SSH access, well, not all enterprises like that option, so it's turned off by default. Uh, how about updates? Well, we now support ability to automatically update the first component that we, uh, that we kind of introduce automatically update Azure Machine Learning SDK itself on Got the it. VM, so it's always up to date uh, and uh, up, uh, ready to kind of run. But uh, we also ho have on the roadmap uh, other updates like security updates ready, so we'll keep, so this set of options is uh, uh, keep evolving, we'll keep adding uh, things that we believe are important. And this is where the IT Pro stuff starts leaking into the workspace, which is important in an enterprise setting. Exactly, yeah, this is kind of a, a representation of this shell, hard shell around mm -hmm. the notebook VM, like uh, putting notebook VM inside of, sorry, compute instance <laughs> right. inside of the virtual network is important because if you're in, inside of enterprise environment, virtual network is the uh, first kind of uh, security boundary uh, around your environment. So That's supporting awesome. that is super important. Okay, so let's click create. If you did everything right, it will start creating. Yep, and you can see it starts creating. We can see all of the other uh, compute instances including this one in this list uh, of compute. So now, uh, former notebook VM is part of the compute blade. So now we have training clusters, compute instances, and we can see all of the progress that is happening with them. That's cool. And these are just standard VMs that are attached to the Azure Machine Learning workspace that are shared amongst everyone that has access to them. Yeah, that, that's a great, great point because there are standard VMs in terms of what's inside, but uh, they're managed VMs. Right. And that's important because uh, you, you wouldn't, for example, the, there is a notion of um, uh, Azure uh, resource mm -hmm. for uh, uh, infrastructure as a service VMs. So there is no access that we provide to the user to this kind of underlying resource. Uh, the only access that users have to those VMs is uh, through the controls that we made available here, awesome. which is why they're more secure. People cannot shoot themselves in the foot by right. opening up or configuring them in an insecure way. I see. I see. So if I wanted to use like the standard Jupyter Lab or Jupyter thing, that's still available is what I'm saying here. Oh, yeah, perfect. 
Uh, yes, th this link is here, will lead you to the Jupyter Lab. But before we go there, let's do one of the other kind of cool features that our uh, computing system supports, is the ability to stop it at any time. Oh, yeah, and that's important because obviously when these things are running, the meter is running too. Yes. So when, when uh, VMs are running, you're paying for compute. And we made sure that uh, this compute can be stopped at any time while preserving all of the customizations and work that, that's been done inside of those VMs. So the persistent state of the VM is actually preserved when you stop it. So you just stop paying for compute, but any, at any moment in time you can start it again and you will resume immediately from that moment in time when you stopped it. Oh, I see. So it's not, it's not, and see this is where I was confused. It's not just shutting it down. It's basically like freezing it and then shutting it down. Exactly. Because sometimes, I mean, when you're doing this kind of stuff, sometimes you get, it's confusing because it, if it's asleep, does that mean you're paying? Yeah, sometimes it does mean that. But in this case, you're sleeping it and then shutting it down and removing the reason. That's awesome. That's cool. Perfect. Let's move to the Jupyter. Cool. So with just one click, we can go into a native Jupyter UI or Jupyter Lab. Many people, many people like Jupyter Lab UI. Mm -hmm. So we made sure that all of this open source tools are available to them. Cool. Uh, and inside of Jupyter, what you can see is exactly the same files that we had before in the full portal. Right. So all the uh, compute instances share the same file system, mm -hmm. so you can collaborate on the same file from all of them. If you, so let me see if I understand it. If you have multiple compute instances, they're all mounting the same file share. Am I getting that right? Exactly. Yep. Oh, that's, that's even nicer, right? Because I thought, well, if I change files here in this VM, how are you going to proceed? So it's basically all one share. Exactly. That's yeah. awesome. So it's a one workspace and everybody collaborating in it and notebooks are also uh, collaborating in it and compute instances as well. That's cool. Okay, so let's open this quick demo and go through our notebook. So as you can see, we can pick up uh, right from very left off in our uh, studio UI. Oh, I see. Because you ran that before, it still remembers that you ran it in Jupyter as well. Yes. In fact, we are joining just exact same kernel session, if you're familiar mm -hmm. with that term, which means that I'm continuing running the same notebook with the same variables and everything defined. That's cool. So let's proceed forward. So our uh, well-known kind of great uh, Python APIs for Azure Machine Learning. So uh, you can see that while I'm doing it, uh, Everything is just, just works, right? Yeah. And what this notebook does, it actually connects back to Azure Machine Learning Service to kind of do these operations. Right. So that's one, one of the features of uh, kind of uh, compute instance is integrated authentication. We, we kind of plumb it through, right. so it's just a concern that's an implementation detail that data scientists don't need to care about. So what we are doing is we are just submitting some job, distributed uh, machine learning job, back to our uh, uh, workspace. Uh -huh. So let's wait until that happens. Uh, and of course, in Jupyter Notebook, our widgets that show progress are kind of one of the nicest thing uh -huh. about this overall So it's almost, like you, it's almost like you have your VM here, and then you have your compute containers that are running in the clusters there, and everything's kind of working really nicely together, basically. Yes, That's everything awesome. is connected. That's yep. awesome. OK, so while it's running, let's proceed forward. Uh, this is a good stuff, well-known stuff. Uh, and uh, the final point that I wanted to illustrate is ability to show TensorBoard metrics in a way that is also integrated with Compute Instance. Got it. So let me try to run it. Huh. Uh, looks like we have a little problem here. Uh, and that's a good opportunity for us to show some collaboration features. So why, Sassy, I know you demoed it before. Yes. So why don't you help me fixing that issue and Collaborate, uh, help me show collaboration features that we have. Okay, so how do we do that? Like, what do we do? Well, I'll just send you a link to this notebook, and that would let you uh, open it and continue working with it. So one of the things that we did before the demo is I granted SAS access to this workspace. So mm -hmm. now we are both members of a one workspace, and we can collaborate. Uh, on our notebooks and compute instances together, because now compute instances can be shared uh, between all members of the workspace, but within the boundaries of the workspace. Awesome. So we're going to go to my computer because you just messaged me, and I'm going to click on the link real quick and see if this actually works. Oh yeah, I'm crossing my fingers. Cross your fingers. So <laughs> okay, so it's asking me to log in, which is good. And I am, I think, if, I, if I'm looking at this right, I am literally back in the notebook exactly where you left off. Exactly, yes. Right. So now if I go down, there's everything that's in there. 
I should, there's the thing that's running, there's your error, and if I'm looking at this right, we didn't rehearse this at all. <laughs> it looks like you called it experiment instead of EXP, so I'm going to go ahead and change that because, let's be honest, Max didn't want to do like a real bug that I couldn't fix, so he just changed it. I'm going to hit shift enter and everything should be ready to go, and there's a little link that's actually loading TensorBoard, oh, right? what's up? Okay. So let me click on it and see what happens, because if you're going to put a link there, I'm going to click on it. Go and, ahead. And as we can see, this is loading up TensorBoard like I'm used to, and you can see all of the actual, yeah, I mean, you can see the, you can see the accuracy, the loss function, which is cross entropy. You can actually see all of the amazing charts for doing the layers, layer one, layer two, and then you can see dropout there because this, this is like a, just a two-layer neural network with dropout. Exactly. And uh, if you look at the URL, you, you can see that TensorBoard has now kind of a first-class domain name, mm -hmm. and it's protected by our Azure Active Directory uh, login, so you wouldn't be able to open this uh, TensorBoard link without having access to the workspace. So all of that is taken care of for you, and all, all you need to do is just click links, and everything just works. Well, this is kind of magical to me because basically, what you've shown is how we can actually really collaborate as data science together on literally the same things we just ran, which is pretty amazing. So where, where can people go to find out more about this? Um, that's a great question. So at Ignite, we have several sessions that go in-depth on Compute Instance and uh, R. So please attend our sessions and uh, learn more about uh, Compute Instance. Anything else you'd like to add to close? Uh, well, there are many more features that we can talk about, but uh, yeah. Fantastic. Give, well, give it a try. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, just the fact that I can share a machine with other people and, and not have to think about how to do that is pretty amazing. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much for watching. We've been learning all about Azure Machine Learning Compute Instance and how you can share, finally, all of your amazing work with all of the data scientists in your organization. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Take care.